The Princess and the Poor Man. He keeps talking. It's too much. He's like a Jewish man that's had five cups of espresso. Everyone seems to be ignoring us. I might as well be a beggar on streets as far as they're concerned. Can you blame them? They've got kids, wives, families to feed. This grotesque man might as well be their president. The way he talks to me cuts deep. This isn't a flesh wound anymore. It's basically a stab wound. His words are unforgiving. He throws in you're a f***. A black employee goes to stick up for me. With my hand, I say to her, leave it. I'm not worth losing your job over. I think about this moment later, and I hate myself for taking that action. I'm not even sure what I did wrong. He goes on to call me a pig. Do I deserve to be called a pig? I think for a second of the memory of her calling me her little piggy. I love my mum as I think of her. She's incredible. Like a she-hulk fighting off villains. Of course, she used to be like that. Not any more. He starts slapping me to get my attention, and you've guessed it, he continues to rumble on. His breath is terrible. It smells like it could kill hundreds of bats in a cave if he breathed on them. The conversation is now getting as irritating as a bee sting. Obviously, I can't say anything to make him stop talking. He's my boss. He tells me, if you're late again, you're out of here. Done. Adios. You'll be stuck eating out of trash cans for the rest of your life. Homeless. Out. That sounded tempting to make sure that happens. He follows it up with, I mean it. I will not have my company be laughed at by the likes of you. Are you listening to me? I snapped out of my thoughts and focus on wanting my boss to leave me alone. I say to him sarcastically, yes, sir, I'll do my best to be your perfect slave. He puts his hands on my cheeks and then he forces me backwards. I feel the heat of the stove and it stings, like putting your hand into a boiling kettle. My backside starts to really burn. It hurts. And he knows this. He gives me a devil-like smile. He's in full controller mode. He says, are you trying to be funny with me? Squeezes my cheek. When you came to me, you had nothing. I gave you this job to help you. And now, are you trying to fuck with me? Do you want to end up selling drugs like the rest of your kind? Do you? I shake my head. Speak to me like that again, and I'll rip off your nuts. I say nothing this time, because she's here. She's looking straight at us. She's not going to allow this. I try to walk away to prevent my boss from losing this contract, because she'll make sure he does. He grabs me back. She'll also make sure he never works anywhere else. And then the kind, honest, hard-working people like ourselves will be out of work with hungry families to feed. We lock eyes. I put a hand out to stop her from coming closer, but she's not listening. She's determined. I can feel her desperation to come over and help me. She looks angry. She probably thinks the old me would never allow any man to do this to me. Well, things change. Isn't that what they taught you in your posh schools? I know I'm bitter as that thought passes my head, but I don't care. I don't want to see her yet. I'm not ready. I haven't got my mask on yet. She's probably wondering what happened to him. Maybe I'm just being silly. My boss catches where the direction of my eyes is going, and he laughs. He laughs hard. And then he coughs and says, If you're late again, you're gone. Understood? I apologise and tell him I understand. He tells me that he'll be watching me very closely today. I think... Oh, does it matter what I think? Who wants to know what I think? She does. She always has. She's trying to make her way through to me. People just keep wanting to talk to her. She makes polite responses and then moves a step until another bimbo speaks in her ear. It's later. I enter and there she was. <laughs> she looks gorgeous. <laughs> Why haven't I thought of that yet? What's wrong with me? She notices me. She's desperate to talk to me. I can sense it. Why has she always felt this about me? I don't understand why she likes me. She'll never have me again, and anyway, that's not why I'm here. She smiles at me. It's princess-like, which, of course, she's destined to be. Once she marries her Prince Charming, who, incidentally, is approaching us. Her intended husband walks over to her and then kisses her on the cheek. Fucking prick. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't say that about a prince. He does a lot of charity work for this community. He's selfless, he has a heart, he's good. Probably good for her too. At least, I hope he is. 
or else... Or else what? What can I do about it? Oh, know your role, peasant. I get negative a lot. It's probably why I don't deserve her. She smiled at her prince and turns away from me to do it. And my focus goes on her backside. I get memories of what we... Oh, no, stop it. She's not yours any more. Forget it. She chose him. She's happier now. She's free now. She's secure now. Focus on him. My boss walks over to me. What are you doing standing still? Do not pay you around to stand there like a jerk. Get out there and do some fucking work, prick. I apologise. Sorry, I'll get to it. I only came to see her. I thought maybe she might recognise me, which of course she did. I also thought she might remember. The way her look lingers to my crotch tells me she does. I don't want to go into our relationship. We never agreed on anything. We fought too much. But in the bedroom, oh, we connected like two stars colliding. I start serving the guests their champagne. She looks at me and finishes her champagne, and her eyes tell me that she wants me to fill up her drink, which I go to do. But my boss nudges me out of the way before I can, and he fills it up. He goes on to try to make a speech, and she moves away from him to speak to another guest before he can start. During the night, I didn't get any smiles from anyone. They pick up their glasses, and that's it. Piss off. <sighs> Lovely. Like, I'd get anything more from these people. I was their slave, really. <sighs> Dude, good thought patterns. Really positive. <sighs> the champagne is finished. Now I have to collect the glasses. I start to think if only people would actually break them and then stab me in the heart with them. I think if murder wasn't a crime, they'd all do it. And that might make this night less fucking miserable. And I realise at that moment, I'm a massive dick. I tell myself that as I put on my corniest smile. My eyes say, a pleasure to be here and serve you, madam. But my heart simply hurts. Later, I'm laughing at a joke I hear from a departing fellow worker. My boss sees me and tells me to shut the fuck up. I apologise and walk away. She's still here. She's just waiting. Why is she here? The event was finished over an hour ago. Am I the reason she's still here? No, surely not. She puts a hand up to say hi. I don't say or do anything back and quickly walk away. I was harshly told if I interacted with the guests tonight, I wouldn't be asked back to work for him again. I need to focus my mind on work. Oh, come on, stop thinking about her. She can't save you. She can't help your mother. She'd laugh at your problems. You know this. Focus on the job. The truth is, she wouldn't. She'd help me as quickly as she could. She's got a good heart. It's full of love, empathy, understanding. She's like Mother Teresa. She follows me towards the kitchen, and I try not to make contact with her at all. I just think, focus. She stands watching. Her intended husband walks over to her, and she tells him he should go and get the car around. I go to speak to her, and my boss tells me to shut up. He steps in front of me to speak to her himself. She looks pissed off. She wanted to talk to me. She wanted my boss to leave us alone. She's been dying to do it all evening. My boss is very calm and collected. Goes on to tell her this well-prepared speech about his company ethos and all that crap. I think, do you really think she believes that? And laugh. Obviously, he wants a booking for the next big event for his company. He's just been rude to me in front of her. Huh, keep dreaming, fella. I think she'll never book this sleazy, low-paying company to do an event. I'm not looking at her at this point, and she's trying to focus on me, but she's getting spoken to by an idiot. After a moment, she just tells him to piss off. He looks shocked, but simply nods his head and moves away. It's just me and her now. Oh, I've wished for this for so long. I've dreamt of this for so long. I've missed her so much. <sighs> she goes to ask me a question, but she's then interrupted by her intended husband, and he tells her the car is ready. She looks at me, doesn't want to go. I stand still and say nothing. She knows I can't afford to give the game away. She walks away with her intended husband and looks back at me before she disappears. I stand there, angry with myself. I should have told her. I should have let her know what was happening. She would have helped my mum. She loved her growing up. She loved me growing up. Not that her father would give us much time to know each other. Oh, I haven't got the time to waste. Mum's time is running out. I need the support she can give us. I race towards her. 
run as fast as possible. I get to the porch of the hotel and she gets in the car. My boss is out there smoking and I want to scream her name. I just need her help. She could solve most of my problems if I could just shout. Why the hell aren't I shouting? For every second you don't shout, you are bringing your mum closer to her death. Shout, for God's sake. Shout, you prick. So I shout. I shout as loud as I can. Amelia! The car stops. My boss tells me to go inside and grabs my arm. The car reverses. He's demanding I get back into the building. Threatens to kill me if I don't go inside. It doesn't work. He pleads. The car moves closer. He offers me cash if I go inside. Five hundred dollars in future bookings if you go inside. The car stops and she gets out and looks at me and says, Yes. I look at my boss and he pleads with his eyes. I say nothing and walk inside, ashamed of myself. As I walk inside, I tell myself, well done. You just condemned the woman that gave birth to you to death. The Princess and the Poor Men was recorded by Andrea Richardson and written by Joao Antonio Nesita.